Hi, my name is Jacob. I'm a project development advisor here at Custom Built Design and Remodeling. Today we're going to cover five common types of wall insulation that you should consider for your next project. One of the first types of insulation you're likely to come across is fiberglass. It's widely available and an affordable option. Some of the pros of fiberglass are you can generally find it just about anywhere. Typical installation is pretty easy and straightforward. Most people can do it themselves. And it has a natural resistance to fire and mold. Some of the downsides to fiberglass are air infiltration. It doesn't do a good job of stopping or mitigating that airflow. You would need to consider some other solution to partner with the fiberglass to make that cavity more airtight. Another common and widely used wall insulation is cellulose. Cellulose is an eco-friendly product made up of primarily recycled papers. They do a much better job of air sealing a cavity when you pack it into the space and it is fire and pest resistant. Some of the downsides in a wall cavity application for cellulose is the special equipment you need to apply it to the cavity. It is also extremely susceptible to moisture. If it gets wet, typically it has to come out. Another wall insulation that has gained popularity in recent years is spray foam. Spray foam acts as an adhesive, so it creates a watertight, airtight barrier whenever you spray it to your structure or your wall cavity. So it solves both problems of air sealing the space and also insulating the space. Another upside of spray foam is its versatile application. It's great for these odd, random things that you need to insulate. One example would be a skylight chase in an attic. Now let's talk about some of the downsides of spray foam insulation. One is the cost. It is significantly more expensive than the first two options we discussed. Another downside is it's not DIY friendly. It takes special equipment and definitely some knowledge to know how to apply it safely and properly. Another popular choice for wall insulation is mineral wool, otherwise known as rock wool or stone wool. Like some of the other insulations, mineral wool is naturally fire resistant. It's also hydrophobic, so it has a resistance to water or moisture in a way that is better than fiberglass and cellulose. A few of the downsides are it's a bit heavier and bulkier than fiberglass. Uh, but it still has a fairly simple, straightforward application or installation process. It also tends to cost more than fiberglass. The final type of wall insulation I'd like to touch on is a radiant barrier. It's not your primary insulation, it's a radiant barrier. This has to do with reflecting radiant heat waves either into the structure or reflect them on the outside of the structure to keep the heat from coming in. It's almost always used in conjunction with a, a typical or standard insulation. I cannot stress enough that how you install it is critical. It's definitely a moisture barrier, making sure that you're installing it on the correct side of the wall cavity and not trapping moisture is essential. Hopefully I've been able to answer most of your questions. If you're still curious to learn more, go to our website and check out our learning center. There you'll be able to find blogs that go into more detail about which selections are the right fit for your project. I hope you now feel more confident in choosing the right type of wall insulation for your project. I'm Jacob with Custom Built. Thanks for watching.